Coming up, we'll join John Herring, Ed Casas, and the Outdoor Wild Kids as we learn about honeybees and how important they are to our society. Hello, I'm Dean Romano. It's time for Outdoor Wild. I'd like to take a moment to thank some of our sponsors, Stainless Products in Summers, Wisconsin, where you'll find some of the best made quality sanitary process equipment. That's Stainless Products since 1972. Friendly folks and good service. Hi, welcome to the show. All right, now if you're ready, let's go join Ed Casas, some of the Outdoor Wild Kids, and John Herring as we learn about bees and how important they are to our society. Take it away, Ed. Hey, Dean. Ed Casas here with John Herring of the Broward Beekeepers Association. We're here at his tropical apiaries. I have to ask John, though. John, yes. what's an apiary? An apiary is a bee yard. It's oh. the same thing as an aviary, but for bees. It's a place where bees can stay. That's very interesting. It's a Latin word. John, uh, how long have you been a beekeeper? I've been keeping bees since I was uh, about 14 years old, 14, 15 years old. Wow. And could you tell our viewers a little bit about this Beekeepers Association? What do you guys do? Well, uh, the Briar Beekeepers Association is an association of, uh, of people, of backyard beekeepers, that get together and our primary focus is to educate the public and help other people get started in backyard beekeeping. John. You know, our viewers want to know, and I don't even really know, what's the difference between a bee and a wasp? Uh, well, there's two main differences. One is the way they look. A honeybee is a little shorter, plumper, and has got more fuzzy look up, uh, appearance to it. A wasp is more longer and slender. Okay. That's the way they look. Now, the diet is totally different. Wasps are protein eaters. They'll eat bugs and other little worms. Honeybees are more of the vegetarian type. What they'll do is they'll eat pollen and nectar. So there's a big difference between the two. And I guess wasps, they don't make honey. No, no. they make trouble. <laughs> we have Asia and Jacob here, and they have a couple of questions for John. Well, where how, are they, guys? Well, how long can a bee live for? How long can a bee live? That's a very good question. The typical lifespan of a honeybee is four to weeks. six weeks. Um, why do honeybees die when they stink? Uh, well, that's because when they sting you, the stinger comes out and that pulls out a portion of their intestine. And that's the reason why. Okay. And um, why are queen bees reluctant to sting? Queen bees are not necessarily so reluctant to sting. The times when they use their stinger it is when there is another queen bee present. Okay. And then they get into a bee brawl and one will usually sting the other one to death. However, there's been many beekeepers stung by the queen bee. How many eggs can a queen bee lay? Oh, that's another good question. I'm going to say anywhere between 500 and 1,000 a day. How much can a worker bee hold? How much honey can a worker bee hold? Yes. Well, I don't really know exactly how much an individual worker bee can hold. But I can tell you that a worker bee only produces about one twelfth of a teaspoon of honey in her life, which isn't very much. That's not a lot. That is not a lot. That's why it takes a lot of bees. Anywhere from about forty to 60,000 bees is a good, strong colony. And that's what it takes. Um, and why are worker bees the only ones mostly seen from the hive? Worker bees are female bees, and they are the only ones that can gather pollen and nectar. They are the ones that produce the honeycomb. 
and tend to all of the aspects of the beehive. So they are the most important in the hive, and you're going to see the majority of bees is going to be the female worker bee. Right, so that's why we only see um, female honeybees. Most of the, most time. Of the time. That's right. How can you tell a regular bee from a honeybee? Well, it depends on what a regular bee is. There's all kinds of bees. There's thousands of species of bees. Um, some of the more common ones, you have a mason bee, you have a bumblebee, and you have a uh, carpenter bee. Those bees are much bigger, and they're about, uh, I'd say they're about twice the size of a regular honeybee. So you could tell by size, and sometimes it's color. Those bees tend to be far more bright yellow and black, as versus gold or uh, black. Um, how and why are honeybees so organized and categorized? Well, honeybees have to be very well organized in order to survive. Their entire existence is more like a super colony. They're a super organism. They have to have everybody pooling together to make the colony work. So it's very important that they get very organized. Alright. Are honeybees native to the U.S.? That is an excellent question. The answer is no. They're not native to the U.S. So where are they from? They're from Europe. The settlers brought them in to the United States many, many years ago. Why do honeybees pollinate flowers? Well, honeybees feed on nectar and pollen. Inadvertently, they pollinate the flowers. And that's a pretty good question. One of the things that honeybees are is statically charged. And they have a lot of fur, or little, little hairs on them. And naturally, the pollen granules go right to that. And when they go from flower to flower, gathering pollen and nectar, they pollinize the flower. They're not really doing it intentionally. That's just a bonus for us. And Josh is here at Outdoor Wild Kids. I've got Asia, Josh, and Jacob. We're at John Herring's Tropical Apiaries. Hey, kids, you want to go see some bees? Yeah! yeah! Hey, John, any chance we can go see some bees? Absolutely. You ready to take a tour of the bee yard? I sure am. All right. How about you? Let's go. Oh, boy. There's a whole bunch of them there, isn't there? Oh, my gosh, yes. Looks like they're making wow. something. Wow. Very you, nice. I think you, uh... I don't know, I think you uh, ruined some of their effort here. <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, you gotta look at this. All right, what did take, you got take, here? A look, take a look at this. You see this, right? See how they're hanging. Let me get the smoke out of here. See how, see how they're hanging like this? Yes. What they're doing when they're hanging like that, we call that drawing comb. They're hanging and they're letting those little shingles that we spoke about earlier come out from underneath of them and they are working it into wax. See this right here? That is pure, 100% brand new beeswax. Nice. How long, how when, when, when did they start making that? Uh, they started making this uh, a few weeks ago. Okay. Uh, about two weeks ago, I put this this particular box on there because of the Malaluka flow. I see. This particular box doesn't have much in it, but we're going to get to one I believe that does. Ninety-nine. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, it just stuffs a rag in their bugle so they can't call everybody else. Right. To the party. Now, are all these guys the same, or we have different purposes here, or? Well, I, I, I tell you what. Here's a little. Here, here's going to be a little bit of education time. Good. All right. Remember earlier we talked about, or maybe we didn't. We talked about drone bees and worker bees. All of it's these been... bees here, yes. All of these are worker bees. Okay. Now, you see how these cells right here? See how they're very, very large? Yes. They made these cells for drones because oh. drone bees are much bigger. This is what we call drone cells. So, what are the drones doing while the workers are working? Um. Well, they. 
the only purpose for the drone is to mate with the queen. Oh, <laughs> okay. That's the only thing that I they see. Do. Let's pull out, uh, let's give us a little bit more smoke here. And let's just see if we got some honey in here. Oh my God. Is that, that honey right there? That is honey. See that? Honey right there. This, this is honey right here. How awesome is that? It's not ripe, uh -huh. but it is honey. Now the difference between ripe and unripened is ripened honey is less than 18% water content. Mm. They are still filling these cells. Wow, look at them. They're still filling it now. Look at what the little doing, faces in it. Yeah, they're taking it. They, you know, right now they think something bad's going to happen. So they're, they're taking it and they're gorging on it, putting that into their honey stomach. Oh my goodness. And that's what they're doing. I have no idea. That's awesome. Yeah. All right, let's get right on in here. See all this gooey, gooey stuff right here? Yeah. Look, look at this nasty stuff. You see this? Yeah. You know what that is? Is that that wax? No, no, no. That's not wax. That's Pe bee poop? No. People pay a lot of money for this stuff. Oh, that's royal honey? Nope. What do they call it? No. That's propolis. I have no idea what that is. What is propolis? Propolis, propolis is bee glue. This is what they use to glue all of their stuff together. Basically, they make this stuff out of plant resins. They go out and they'll collect some resins Boy. and and put this uh, in the box to to do There's this. There's so many different products coming out of these things. It's oh, so interesting. It's you want to go to through the products of the hive. We've got propolis right here. This is used in, in a lot of uh, medicinal, for medicinal reasons. A lot of people take this and swear by it. Here we have, this is nothing but pure beeswax. It's used in the cosmetic industry along with the uh, with the drug industry. Hmm. So that's two. Here we have honey. Obviously we eat the honey, right? Yeah. That's really good stuff. The one other thing that we're probably not going to be able to see today is the royal jelly. Ah, yes, that's what I was thinking. That has to be in, you have to have queen cells, and it is at the bottom of the queen cells. Actually, at the top, because they, they're vertical. Okay. So, all those products from the hive, it's amazing. Yeah. There's, there's everything that they do is, is edible and good. Why anybody would not want to be a beekeeper is beyond me. I think everyone should have bees. At least everyone, one person in the family should be in charge of bees. That's right. Look at this. It's going to pull this out like a, a cell. Or a... Mm -hmm. oh wow, God. look at this shot this here. This is gorgeous. This is all 100% honey. This mm -hmm. is ripened honey. See how it's all capped off? It looks kind of it odd. Looks yeah, it looks almost like man-made. Like it's. Uh... Remember when we were talking in the honey house? Yeah. I said you have to take a hot knife, and you have to cut the wax cappings off. Ah. This so is this the wax. is holding all the honey in, basically. That's right. right. Now? I see. I, this I'm is starting their to make vacuum sense. packing. Absolutely. And if you just take and you just pick a little bit of it away, look at that. It There's is pure 100 honey right there. <laughs> and they go right to it. Look at that. <laughs> Now, as I'm assuming there's a queen at the bottom of this or something? There is a queen at the bottom. We're not going to be able to find her, I don't uh, think. <laughs> no, we're not, we're not going to go down there in the bottom. Uh, I don't think that's uh, worthwhile to go down okay, there Okay, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> no need to wake her up, huh? No, she is busy laying eggs. That's her only job in her life is to lay eggs. All these here are worker bees, and that is one gorgeous frame of honey. So all we do is we take the cappings off, we put it in the extractor, removes everything by centrifugal force, Yep. and put it right back in there empty, and it'll look just like this, and there you go. Wow, very interesting. Isn't this cool? Thanks, John, for showing us all this. Uh, Man, we know, would have never have gotten the, the heart of this without you, sir. I tell you, educating the public is one of my favorite things to do. They are so fascinating. The more you know about them, the more interesting they Absolutely. seem to get. Absolutely, and that's what it, that's what happened to me today, and I think with the outdoor wild kids too. So, I am so glad they were wild enough to come out here in the middle of a bee. Yard. I know. <laughs> <laughs> we will spread the good word of the bees, sir. Yeah, we might want to give that back. To that them. was nice, Eo. Yeah, save them a little bit of work there. <laughs> 
so we'll go ahead and put these back. Kind of like Legos, huh? <laughs> yeah, they'll fix it. And you see, they're not, there's thousands of bees in this box, and they're not all coming out here. Nope. You know, we're not being run away. Nope. They're more investigating us more than anything else. <laughs> yes, they are. All right. See, here's more. Here's more propolis. They glue and, that and, stuff together. Uh, you said it's a glue, but uh, like no, it's like a plant resin. To uh, what it is? They use it as a glue. Okay. So, and is, is modern industry using it too? Uh, not as a glue. Okay. It's used as a uh, as a, the medicinal for use medicinal it. purposes. Oh, okay, okay. Is, is what it's used for. Well, any other questions that I, you can possibly think of? I don't think so. I think you've answered everything, and this was very enlightening, just opening up there. Well, wait a minute. Oh, who's that guy? There's a beetle in there. Oh, 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 oh. Yes, indeed, there is a beetle in there. This is... Who's he? Oh, let me, let me just show you. Okay. See these right here? That beetle? Yeah. That is a new pest Two to the honey Three of them. Oh, there's a lot of them. Those are called small hive beetles. I don't like they them. They are a pest there's to honeybees. There's an ant. I don't like them either. There's an ant in there, too. Yes, you, you'll, <laughs> find, you'll find that in there. Like... The bees cannot do anything to these hive beetles, and there's nothing better than the sound of a hive beetle crunching. What's this guy's behavior right here with his butt up in the air. That's that tail wagging you're talking about? Uh, no. All right. You see this right there? Yeah. When that they, when they've got their when they've got their their butt up in the air mm -hmm. and you see them fanning? Yeah. What they're doing is they're fanning they're fanning off pheromones. Ah. They'll do that at the entrance occasionally. See, they're they're fanning off whatever they're too? communicating. Yeah. Gotcha. Thanks, John, for everything. This has been a lot of fun. Head yes, Gossips, Outdoor Wild with John Herring of the Broward Beekeeper Association. Here's some research I did online. Billions of bees are dying off and our entire food chain is in danger. Bees don't just make honey, they are a giant humble workforce pollinating 75% of our growing plants. So if we don't take protection for bees, we won't have a lot of the vegetables and flowers and things that we need. So they're really important and pollination is when they bring the nectar from one plant and they bring it to another plant and the other plant grows. But they're vital to life on earth. Every year pollinating plants and crops with an estimated 40 billion dollar value. So bees are really important to protect. And the bees of the workers can only live for about two all the way to four weeks. So they don't live long and the harder they work the less honey they can produce and honey is the main food source for them. The only reason how bees can maintain their life. So what did you learn? I learned that smokers um, can calm the bees down and so they can't like send out a warning call. And I also learned that you can't swat one or they'll get mad. Thank you for watching. Tune in next time for Outdoor Wild Kids. Until next time, this is Ed Costas with Outdoor Wild Kids Florida. Keep it buzzing. Back to you, Dean. All right. Thank you, Ed. Thanks, guys. We hope you enjoyed some of what you saw. We'd like to take a moment to uh, thank my executive producer, Charlene Hum, for helping us out with this show. Also, we'd like to thank you for tuning in. We hope you'll join us again on the next Outdoor Wild. And try to remember, our planet Earth belongs to all of us. It's up to all of us to get involved to help take care of it. I'm Dean Romano, saying so long for now, and thanks for watching Out There a While. See ya.
I'm Dean Romano. It's time for Outdoor Wild.